there. In this video we're going to talk about Google Scholar and how you can use it to do research uh, across the internet and in particular within journals and academic spaces uh, that are sometimes don't come up as quickly or easily within uh, your traditional Google search engine. So Google Scholar does exactly that. It explores academic research and publishing and looks at those for results of what you're looking for rather than across the entire web. So let's throw in a term. I'm going to use culturally relevant pedagogy. And the first thing you notice is when I do that, it's going to list a bunch of possible or suggestive titles. Uh, keeping that in mind, depending on the term that you use, if you want to make sure it is a, ter a collective term, that is when Google Scholar looks for this information, it looks for it as this setup, as culturally relevant pedagogy, those three words in a row, you can actually use quotation marks and that will tell Google, uh, Google Scholar that when they are looking for these words, they need to appear just like this. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to hit search. Now it comes back uh, pretty quickly and as you will notice up here it gave us about 23,000 results. That's a lot of results. So this is again why it makes those suggestions. It may also be if you're looking for it in a particular context. Maybe you're looking for it in relevance to K through 12 or you're looking for it in relevance to higher ed. Lots of different ways to think about it. But very quickly, to kind of look at what you're seeing here on the screen, there's different things that pop up that you should know about. So the first is down the center column are the different articles. Any of these articles you could select out to. Uh, so I could click on this, it will pop open, and it will bring me to that page uh, where this origin, where the actual original article stands. Now one thing that happens uh, when you do this is it's going to give you access to the abstract. It may not actually give you access to the article, right? So this is this is showing us all the different uh, places this research shows up. It doesn't necessarily give us access to the actual article. However, if we go back and we see over here on the right, uh, it says PDF academia.edu. I can click on that and it will give me access to the PDF file, the actual research article uh, that is on a different website is hosted somewhere else that has been most likely put there by the author. So if I wanted access to this, I can do this. But as you'll notice, that doesn't happen with every entry. And so that's something to be to keep in mind is you're not necessarily going to get access to every one and you may have to use some other resources to get a hold of them. A couple other things to think about or to look at is on along the left hand side, you can actually curate or you can fine tune your research results. So maybe I right now when it returns, it returns them by relevance, but maybe I want to sort them by date. So I want to see what's the most latest article on uh, culturally relevant pedagogy. OK, there seems to be some articles. Uh, this one, at least at this time, was published five days ago. Great, this, this looks like uh, recent material, and I could get access to it. I do want to keep in mind, here's a, here's a distinction, is that where it's showing up, it's telling me where it shows up, that it shows up somewhere in that abstract. Uh, but it doesn't tell me that it shows up in the title because it's not here in the title. So it might not be as relevant. Something to keep in mind as you're deciding what to look at and what not to look at. All right, but let's go back to uh, sorting by relevance and you know you get a lot of good information here again you could also sort by time it defaults by any time but you could do a custom range uh, maybe you only want to know uh, what came out on this topic in between 1990 and 2000 so you can put that range in there and boom it gives you now we're down to 567 results so if I was looking to find out about culturally relevant pedagogy in the 1990s I could find what the research looked like during that time. All right, that's all great. Now let's look at an actual po one of the actual results. So save is a really cool feature because if you're researching and you find lots of things you're, you're interested in that you want to circle back to and you don't necessarily want to like move away just now, you can select the save button. And before I say that, you want to make sure that you are signed in to Google. So if uh, your, your institution has a Google account, sign into that. Or if you have your own Google account, make sure you're just signed in. 
So you select save and all of a sudden you now have a place where you could save it. Now it looks, it creates uh, a default reading list, but you could also create your own reading list. So you might create lists or labels in relation to uh, what you you are researching, and if you're in if you're doing more than one research project, you're doing research uh, in several different areas. You can create a different list or a different label for each of those. I'm going to choose. Let's just stick with the reading list. Actually, I'm lied. I'm going to create new, and I'm going to pop in culturally relevant pedagogy, and I'm going to hit and make sure that that's checkmarked and hit done. Okay, so that's been saved and you can tell it's been saved here because the star is filled in versus here where it isn't. Here's another great feature is the cite button. So a lot of times if you're if you're doing this type of research, you want to get that citation, you want to make sure you have the information to plug into your work references, your bibliography, etc. You select cite and it automatically populates with several of the most famous or most popular citation formats, MLA, APA, Chicago. So all you have to do is cop is highlight the particular one you want, copy it, and then you can paste it where you need to. Uh, you can also export these, uh, export them if you're using a, a bibliography, big bibliography tool like EndNote or RefWorks. You can also see that uh, who it has been cited by. And this is sometimes useful, particularly if you want to find out if a work is related to other works or other works that talk about the same topic. In this case, uh, this article is cited by 9,636 other articles. Oh, that's great. You may find uh, something else that may be useful for what you're doing. So that's often a way to, to find relevant research. Another is related articles. Now for this one, I'm not actually going to choose related articles, um, but one of the cool tips about using related articles is if you find something that you that you think is really interesting, really useful, and it's not available, you can select related articles and it will tell you here are some other related articles along those topics. Now I did that and unfortunately it didn't give me much better results because none of these are available, but sometimes you'll luck out in that they are. So the other piece here is the versions and that sometimes you will find different versions are available. They most likely are all similar or the same article, uh, but they may be published or available on different pages. Uh, so one really interesting example to, or thing to consider with that, and there's not one on this page, but if we go down and find, here's a good example. This particular article uh, has four different versions and it's not available over here. So sometimes, and again, this isn't always, but when you click through, you might find a website that does have it available. So it's sometimes if there's an article you're really wanting, trying to find out, and it's not available in the traditional way, you can select on it and see, oh, is it offered somewhere else? So that's uh, that additional feature. Uh, I wanted to also circle back and if you go up here to uh, over here on the left to this little hamburger menu and select you will find here again some some different useful information. So if you go to my library you will find this is where you have created your different lists, right? So there's the reading list, there's a culturally relevant pedagogy and you can manage these, change these, you know, add the labels, etc. Uh, you can also come down here, and this is one of my favorite tools, which is alerts. So in alerts, you can actually create uh, email alerts for when relevant research that you're looking for has actually been published. And this will come out either bi-weekly or once a week, depending on what level of results uh, are actually being published. So you put your alert query, and again, here's where using quotation marks is really useful and important. Uh, you can take those out, but then any article that includes the word culturally relevant in pedagogy will be sent to you. And maybe that's what you want, and that's great. But if you're looking for this particular term, you use those quotation marks. Make sure the email is correct. And then here you can choose most relevant results or all results. The more, uh, the more specific the term, I tend to go with all results. So once I did that, it gave me a sample of, okay, since 2022, here are all the articles that have shown up, uh, so long as I selected all results. If I selected most relevant results, uh, 
it looks like it might have given me the same list. I'm, I would have to look at that quicker, more, more detail. I can, I can select create alert. And now that's going to email. It's telling you exactly what it's set up to do, which is whenever this term shows up in new results, uh, the most relevant of those should be sent to this email. So I can always go back here to Google Scholar and start my search again. Uh, so that's Google Scholar. It's a pretty robust tool. It gives you a lot of different resources to play around with. Uh, and there's also plenty of other resources on the net that can give you tips and uh, ideas on how to use it best. Hope this was helpful. Thank you so much.